Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this video about React Forms. So in this video, we are obviously going to build a form. And um, you should know that there are actually libraries out there that help you with building forms. Um, however, I think that especially in uh, in this case and for simple forms, you don't need those libraries. Um, so we're going to build it from scratch. Um, so to get started, uh, you might already be somewhat familiar with form tags. If not, that's no problem. Um, let's uh, first get this thing started. Um, I will call it form and uh, let's put a P tag right there. And let's say uh, create a post. So now if I go back to my app, we got this. So we're going to start out with a form tag and we can remove the, remove the action. And usually a good form has labels and inputs, right? So let's say we have a label right here and we want to have, for example, a post title. So we can put it in here as well. Then we also have an input for that title and we can connect the two together using, for example, the ID property, um, and I will call it title as well. And later on in the course, you will see why this is a good practice to always have a label connected to your input um, for testing purposes. So I can copy and paste this. And let's say we also want to have a, uh, a um, post body. So just have to change this. And now if we save it, you will see we have these um, two input fields. Um, we will go over the styling in a minute. But before that, we're going to add a button. And we can, for example, say um, upload post. And this button will have a type of submit. Now, if we save this, you will see that they're all in line. So... Um, I wouldn't recommend uh, what I'm going to do in a real life application because I think it's better to style it with CSS then. But for now, we can use the break tag, line break. And uh, I'm going to do it like this. So there we go. That looks a little bit better. So now we actually want to store the... Um, text we are typing right here inside our react application and we can use a use state hook for that so we can say const and i will call it form data then of course this has to be set form data and we take the use state and i will give it a default value of title empty string and a body of an empty string as well. So now when I save this, of course nothing will happen because right now if I go over to the state section in my dev tools and I type things, nothing will happen. So we have to create a function that um, constantly updates the form data when we are changing the input field. So what we could say is const on change and this function might be um, a little difficult to understand so I will first type it out and then explain you what's actually going on so we take the event value and then we have that arrow function right there and then we want to set the form data take the previous state and return that previous state in an object by destructuring it. And then we want to update the event, the target.id, and set it to the event, the target, target.value. So what's actually going on, and I can best show you this by actually putting that function right here um, and connecting it with the on change property on the input field is this is actually a shorthand for saying hey I want the oops 
I want the event to be passed to the onChange function and I will give it as an argument. So what we then do is we are setting the form data to the current state because the pref state of course is the current state of form data. We then destructure its properties using the spread operator. And then we want to actually update the target field we're, we're targeting. And since we have an ID connected to it, we can use this right here. So we can say, okay, change the um, current value of that property to the one we have just typed right here in the input field. So now if I copy and paste this part and also put it on this input element, and now if I open up my dev tools and start typing, you will see things will get updated. Now this for sure will work, but it is not optimal. And the reason is that currently our form is what you would call uncontrolled. And I can give you an example by, let's put this in some curly brackets. And let's say we have a bug somewhere in our code that causes our set form data to not execute properly. All right, so I'll just comment it out for now. What could happen right now is that the user can type data right here, but our state doesn't get updated and they can then submit the post and they think everything went right. But both you and I know this is not the case. So we can prevent this by making sure that the input value is always connected to our React state. So what I will do, I will just destructure the properties of form data. So this will be title body. And now I can say that the value of this input is connected to title and for the one down below to the body. And now you will see when I save it, and it appears that there is a bug in our code, we cannot even change the state. However, if it does work, it works properly fine, and it gets updated in our state as well. So my recommendation is to always connect your input value with your React state so you have a single source of truth, and that is React. So that was it for on change. The next thing we're going to take a look at is the on submit function. And again, you can call this however you want, but for this demonstration, we're going to call it on submit. So we can say const on submit. Also there we take in the event as an argument. And here we could, for example, console lock the form data. Now, in the next video, we're going to make a request to a server, but for now, we will just log it to our console. So we can pass this function to the um, on submit property right here, just the same as we did with the on change. And now if I save it and, for example, put like title and body here, and we go to the console and I click on the submit button, you see it did a quick update right there, but um, it's gone. And to prevent this uh, from happening, we can um, actually say e.preventDefault. It's a function, so we have to call it. And now when we save it, and we put a title and a body, click on the submit button, you will see it will stay there. And also our, um, the text we've entered still remains here. Now, uh, in a lot of cases, after a successful request, you of course want to clear the, the form field again. And the best way I think to do that with controlled components is to, instead of um, putting the default values right here, we could actually say const and we say default form data 
is an object and we're actually going to cut and paste that right there and now we can pass default form data as a default value to the uh, your state hook and we can go right here in our unsubmit function and we can say set form data to that default form data so now when I type something and I submit you'll see it does console lock and it also clears the input fields so that was it for the video about forms now I do recommend you to save this code somewhere um, put it somewhere in notepad just copy paste it somewhere because we are going to use this in the um, data fetching video that is upcoming so um, thanks for watching and I'll see you there